Okay, now we're going to dive into plumbing systems. You know, it's your, your piping, your hot water, um, all of those things. A lot of health and safety issues that we see are deteriorating pipes, leaking pipes, rotten wood because of leaking pipes, uh, venting that is not proper. So carbon monoxide is going to get in the home if the venting is not proper. Um, there's a pop valve on water heaters. If that is not um, piped properly, where if this pop valve and starts spraying hot water everywhere, it could burn somebody. So it needs to have a drip leg, they call it, where the pipe goes down to the ground and it sprays it out in the ground or a pan or another drain. So just look at the system. Is it working? Is it safe? Um, is it venting properly? Is it draining properly? Like your sewer lines, you know, if they're, if they're all twisted crazy and, and just, if it looks wrong, most likely it is. So you've got to know your basic components as far as plumbing. But if, if you evaluate those things, and if you're really, really not sure, you know, take a picture of it, take a video of it and call it out and say, it shouldn't be evaluated by a licensed plumber. Okay. So some things we run into are uh, well water versus city. So when there's a well, obviously you're getting the water from the ground, not from the municipality. So that has to work. You know, you have to have a pressure tank, you have to have a pump, you have to have electricity to it. All those things are, are what are what are needed in order for that well to function properly. If it's bringing up water that is all orange and nasty, well, you'll, you'll want to call that out and you'll want to re recommend like a, a water filter or water treatment system. Um, if you look at septic versus city sewer, uh, in the country, a lot of times there's what's called a septic tank. It's a, it's a field where the, the sewage goes out, goes into a big concrete tank, and then it gets distributed out through the ground through these pipes, and it functions as its own filter system. So sometimes they, they fail. Lots of times they last for years and years and years, but it, you know if you've got green grass growing really tall where the septic system is or you see sewage on the ground, you definitely want to call that out. Once again, remember health and safety issues. I can't say enough. If somebody can get hurt, if they can get, uh, you know, poisoned, if it's not working properly, those are health and safety issues. And then just look for outdated and deteriorating systems. If you've got a do-it-yourselfer that's got galvanized pipe hooked to PVC pipe hooked to PEX pipe, and it's got duct tape on it, and it, it's just a mess. You know, lots of times it's not worth trying to call out one piece of the plumbing. You might say replace you know, all dated plumbing with like plumbing system or something like that. Um, you just want to avoid this, this whole do it yourself, patch it up, you know, band-aid um, duct tape kind of situation where it's just patched up, even though it's working, it's going to fail. So those are things that you'd want to call out and definitely try to get it on the bid. And then, you know, do the, the systems work properly? Do they have shut off valves? So if something starts leaking, can they, can they isolate it and shut it off? Um, scold valves, those kind of things. Uh, the hot water heater, clearly it needs to function. It needs to work. It needs to be vented properly if it's a, a gas water heater. And it definitely has to have a pop valve with um, a pipe on it. So in case the pop valve goes, it's not going to spray hot water all over a person and burn them. And then we talked about proper venting, furnaces, um, venting for plumbing. You know, there's there's venting that goes through the roof usually for plumbing. So it's, it allows the drains to drain properly and not gurgle or back up. So those are things that uh, a basic plumbing system should should have. And you should be able to call those out if they're not if they're not there. Okay, now let's talk about heating, and cooling, HVAC systems. Lots of times we'll run into things where, you know, there's asbestos tape on the ducts. That's a no-no. You got to get rid of that. Um, lots of times people will vent um, shower fans and washer dryer uh, vents into crawl spaces, into attics, and not properly out the exterior of the home. You need to call that out. Lots of times we'll see them dumping a uh, dryer vent right into a crawl space. It's just getting moisture and lint and all kinds of stuff in the crawl space, which is going to cause mold. Um, the other things we run into quite a bit is the ductwork. It's just beat up. It's old. It's not secure. Uh, the air's flowing everywhere. It's just not working properly. So that needs to be called out. There's old baseboard heat. There's old um, boiler heat. There's all kinds of things. Uh, heating systems that have been used in the past, as long as they function and they're safe, then they're fine. Um, if you see something ancient, old, like this old furnace, all wrapped in asbestos, I mean, that thing has just outlived its life. You want to call that out. And, and recommend that they replace it with a new modern system 
it's not going to get any better. There's probably no parts for it. And there's health and safety issues, probably carbon monoxide issues, all kinds of issues. And it's just inefficient. It's going to cost your client much more money just to keep that thing running as it would just to replace it. So look at your heating and cooling system. Call on anything like that. Those are pretty common, common issues. And just remember, too, with FHA, you don't have to have an air conditioner. Um, seems kind of strange, but as long as you have heat, um, it's not required that you have cooling. Okay, then these are the basic things to remember. Um, once again, health and safety, health and safety issues all the time. Outdated and deteriorating systems. Um, do the systems work properly? And is it the current code or is it out outlived its useful um, expected life? And then one thing that we did not address yet, but you want to take into consideration, if there's a room in the house that's being used as, I'm going to call finished living space, but it's not conditioned finished living space. What, what I mean by that is there's no heating and cooling to that space. So let's say it's a sunroom and it's got a door on it, but it's not heated and cooled like the rest of the house, then that's not conditioned space. So lots of appraisers will not give you value for that square footage if it's not conditioned. So you could literally put a duct in there to heat and cool that that space and then it becomes conditioned space which now can be added to the square footage and added to the value of the home. So just that's a little trick to kind of keep in mind um, if someone's looking to finish or live in a room that that is technically not um, conditioned. The other thing we want to look for is uh, carbon monoxide detectors and smoke detectors. Okay, If a home is heated by a gas or some sort of fueled uh, furnace it's a great idea to have a carbon monoxide detector. You always want smoke detectors for sure. I always recommend both smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. You can die from carbon monoxide poisoning and certainly a smoke detector can help you get out uh, and warn you in case of a fire. So those are health and safety issues, kind of no-brainers. Go ahead and mark them down if they're not in the home and they've got to work. Okay? Some municipalities will require them to be hardwired. Some will let you get away with a, a battery operated um, detector. And then proper venting. So if your hot water heater or your furnace is, is not properly vented and you're getting carbon monoxide in the home or it's taking in, you know, air that's in your air take that intake that's, that's, um, you know, coming from, a the crawl space instead of from the house, there's, you just want to call out those items. So proper venting so that the systems work properly. There's fresh airflow, those kind of things. Take a look, and if you're really not sure, but it just looks wrong and, and you don't know exactly what to do, then recommend, you know, have it evaluated and tested and um, by a licensed heating and cooling contractor, and that'll help your client, you know, isolate those kind of issues. Okay, the next one we're going to talk about is a stair systems. Pretty straightforward here. Once again, you know, you don't want someone to fall down the stairs. You don't want them to hurt themselves. Last thing you want is a child to fall through spindles that are too uh, far apart or stairs that don't have a handrail or stairs that are uneven. Um, you know, common sense here. It's got to work. It's got to function. It's got to be safe. It's got to be standardized. It's got to have proper spindles, proper handrails, and everything has to work and be safe. Okay, we just addressed this. Proper handrails with returns. FHA likes to see a return so your hand doesn't slip all the way down, okay? Um, it's kind of a, a little item, but it's kind of a big item. So if, you do, if you're missing a handrail or a missing return, you'd want to call that out. You want to make sure you have proper spindles, proper rise, proper run, and current code. You know, you don't want a, a really narrow stairwell or a really steep stairwell where it's safe or unsafe or it, it curves around and there's, there's nothing to grab onto. There's... Um, the, the treads are all different sizes and the, the risers are different heights. Things like that, definitely call those out. 